Now, what I can do is create a load of new pages, and then I can easily go to File, Place, select all the images that I like, load them onto my cursor, and now I simply click, 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 click. Perfect. Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an easy drag and drop color overlay in InDesign so that you can easily create repeatable templates for when you need cover, uh, color overlays on images so you don't have to copy and paste uh, their color blocks on top of the images every time. You can just drag and drop on a new page and let it do its magic. So to get started, um, I'll talk a little bit about the project that I was working on. We were making the, the tiles for a website, clickable tiles. They were all the same size. Um, they were all of variations of different colors, all the same dimensions. They were probably 30, 40 different photographs with a different color overlay on them, and then a small subtitle in the corner of each image. So just to get started, here is a file I have begun with similar attributes to this project that I had recently. I have 1200 by 800 pixels, uh, no facing pages, no primary text frames, uh, just some margins just for the heck of it. Let's hit create. And now let's go ahead and get started with an example of what I was doing beforehand. Beforehand, I was going to File, Place, and... Okay, now I'm going to select an image to put into here. Let's just take this one, place it in, and then I would drag this image across here. I would fit it in. While I'm at it, let me get rid of the bleeds. We don't need them for an online project. I'm gonna put zero bleeds. All right. And then we're going to do view, display performance, and click high quality display so we can see this as it should look. So here's my image. Now what I was doing was I was taking a rectangle and drawing it on top. Then I was selecting a color for it. Let's say this deep blue color. Then I was going to effects and dropping it down to color. Sometimes if the effect wasn't good enough, I would copy and then paste. I'm going to paste in place by using Control Shift Alt V. Now we should have two blue boxes. There we go, yep. This one, I would usually place to uh, multiply and then knock the opacity back as needed. So here's our image and then the last thing I would add in is the subtitle or the little uh, corner information. All right, so here's what my final image would look like. However, whenever I needed to make a new one, it took a while to edit every single one of these because I would duplicate the page. Then, now that I have two of them, now what I'd have to do is move this rectangle, move the second rectangle, then double click on the image so I can reach it, then relink it in as a new image, and then move the rectangles back to their appropriate location and change the text on top. I thought there must be an easier way to do this. So I found how to make a drag and drop template using InDesign. Prior, we were also doing this project in Photoshop, um, but same problem arises there. You have to open and close all of these Photoshop files and navigate to the correct layer and relink the image in. So how do we go about doing this easier? 
parent pages is the secret. So let's go ahead and knock this back to just the single image. I'm going to make a completely new page here with nothing on it. And then I'm going to go over here to my parent page. This, be careful not to mix these up. Make sure you're doing this on the right page. I'm currently on a parent. So what I'm going to do on the parent page here is I am going to add a rectangle frame. If you've never used these before, it's basically a placeholder for an image. Also note, um, if your InDesign is not looking like my InDesign, go up here to the top and switch over to Essentials Classic. That should get you on the same page as me. So let's go to our rectangle frame tool. I'm going to draw it across the whole image. Make sure it's adjusted to the outer edges. And now what you can do is place an image directly into this and it will receive it. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and adjust the fitting setting. Um, I want the content to fill the frame proportionally. This will save you time in the future because you won't have to automatically adjust everything. It'll be a lot closer. All right, now that we have this frame, we are going to go ahead and add the color blocks. I'm going to go back to my initial page and steal uh, this block and this block, both. So this one and this one. I'm going to go back to my parent page, paste these in place. You can see I have my two color blocks and they are on top of my rectangle frame at the moment. The key to making this work is layers. Right now I'm adjusting both of my frames, my, my blue boxes, both of my blue boxes. I have them selected. They are selected and that is indicated by these two little blue icons next to rectangle and rectangle. This layer is the uh, rectangle frame, which is also labeled as rectangle. Just for the sake of knowing which one is which, I'm going to rename these. Now this will only work if you go ahead and make a secondary layer, bring the secondary layer above that contains the two blue boxes and let the picture frame remain down here. I am not going to lock the layer of this one, but I'm going to lock the boxes. This is the only way to accomplish the effect we're going for. If you lock the layer, it will not work. Only lock the boxes. Now I'm going to add a, another layer. This third one is going to be where I place my text box. Just to make sure that it is ending up in the correct spot, I am going to lock out the other layers momentarily. Steal that. Come back to my parent page. Go to my layers. Make sure I'm on layer three where my text is going to live. Perfect. Alrighty, there we go. Now I'm going to unlock everything as needed. Make sure my rectangles are pulled down to the edge of the page. Looks like I'm missing a couple of pixels there. And relock out the blue boxes. All right. Oh, nope, didn't fix the top either. Okay, so here's our parent page. There is a rectangle frame, which is on the lowest layer. The next layer is the color overlay layers. Note that these two blue boxes are stacked. One is with the effect of color, the other one is with the effect of multiply and then drop down to a lower opacity. The very topmost layer I have is my text layer and that is on top of the two locked out blue boxes. Now we're gonna go back to our regular pages. And here is what our default A parent page looks like now. So, watch me quickly come to this same effect by simply loading an image onto my cursor and clicking it in. So I'm gonna go up to File, Place. 
I'm going to find my horse image. And now my image is loaded onto the cursor and I click. There we go. Drag and drop, super easy. Now, what I can do is create a load of new pages. And then I can easily go to File, Place, select all the images that I like, load them onto my cursor. And now I simply click, 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 click. Perfect. So this is exactly the way I was looking to get this finished. In the project I was doing, there were several different categories of tiles that needed to be done. There was blue tiles, there were green tiles, and there were orange tiles. So I'm going to show you how I quickly also came to that effect. So we're going to use the sections here to quickly make a duplicate section of these tiles. Just so we don't get lost, I'm going to rename these. This one's called blue. Now I'm going to select the blue section style and I'm going to tell it to create an alternate layout. This is for when you're designing if you want to um, see what your layout would look like in a different dimension. We're going to utilize this but not change the dimension. Typically when you use this by default it will simply flip the orientation but I'm just going to flip it back to the way it came with the wider width and the lower height. The name for this will be orange. I'm going to click OK, that all looks good. So now we have a duplicated version of our other layout. You can see these here side by side. Pull this up where you can see it a little better. So now you can also see that we have a duplicated parent page. There's a parent and there's B parent orange. So we don't get lost, I'm going to go ahead and rename these. I'm going to right click on this parent, go to parent options, and I'm going to tell it to be called blue. Perfect. Now I'm going to right click on this one, change the options for it, and tell it to be simply orange. All right. Now we have blue and now we have orange. So let's go edit the parent style for orange. All I need to do now is go to my layers, deselect my two blue boxes. I'm going to highlight both of them by holding shift and clicking on their respective layers. Now I'm going to go to my color changer and let's pull a nice orange color. Now it's more red than orange. Let's try that one. All right. Now, when we navigate back to this section, now we can see all of these are overlaid with the orange color. And let's say that this section had a different title. We're going to go back, make sure our blue boxes are locked out, and I'm going to edit my text on the battle. Oops. Force of habit, gotta say it every five minutes. Now all of these are represented as orange and they all say the drama in the corner. Now if you ever need to relink this image, the uh, picture is easily adjusted here, but say you wanted to swap it out entirely, simply go to relink and then relink in whichever image it is that you prefer. Let's just say this one because I'm in this folder. Now we have this folder here instead. All right, now exporting. When it comes to exporting all of these files, we want them to come out at a specific size. InDesign is really made for doing print projects, not necessarily digital ones. So when you export, oftentimes what happens is InDesign will export at a high quality. In doing so, it will change the dimensions. It will no longer be 1,200 pixels by 800 pixels. It'll be something much bigger. 
So in that case, we need to find a way to get it to retain the same dimensions here because it is important for the website. When it's time to export, go up to File, Export, then go to your desired location. Uh, for now, I'm going to put these in my downloads. I'm going to assign a name. And what's going to happen is InDesign will simply choose each page and then assign a number to it. I'm going to use the setting of all pages. And here is where you want to have your settings in order for them to come out at the correct and true dimensions. I want to retain my 1200 by 800 dimension. I don't want it to get bigger or smaller than that. So we're going to go to a true screen size of 72. Color space of RGB for screen. And so long as you're at 72, you should be able to pick any of these settings and it will retain its dimension. I like to use high because it is still good quality, but maximum makes the image size a little bit too big, the file size, I mean. Um, if you're using bleeds, you can check that here. And when I click export, now InDesign is going to run through and rasterize each one of these pages and spit it out at the correct dimension in whatever location I chose. Give it a second to work on that. There we go, and now we can see all of my images here. Let's make them bigger where we can see them. Perfect. Now we have all of those thumbnails, or tiles, or whatever you need, all exported super quickly. And whenever it's time for you to make more of them, all you gotta do is make a new page and drop it right in. Let's have a look at these. Yeah, that looks nice right there. Perfect. All right, everybody. Well, I hope this helps. Um, if this video helped you out, leave us a comment below and go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps us out. All right, everybody. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.